Greetings, epic adventure seekers. I'm Allie Bierman, your guide to demystifying your world. And you are here listening to Let's Get Metaphysical Connecting Heart and Mind. Before jumping into the show today, I want to share one of our reviews. It comes from Anne SMH. Fun and thought provoking. Two of my favorite things. I'm so glad I found this show. I could talk and engage about the metaphysical all day long. So great to have so many experts and people with a great range of experience and wisdom to listen to. I love Dan Gordon's show about dolphin and whale wisdom. Amazing metaphysical understanding of these wise creatures. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. And you can leave us a review easily on our show site, and you'll see that in the show notes. Yes. My beautiful mom. And today I'm honoring her. See, I hear so many shows and talks and complaints about people's moms, early family caretakers who said things to them and damaged them. And they go through their whole life thinking, well, that was crummy what happened to me. And by the way, if you had a traumatic childhood and you deem it such and label it that way, you definitely, definitely want to see episode 75 with Dr. Marissa Pay because she had one of those childhoods and she made the choice to see everything so differently and can change your world too. But that's not why I'm here right now. Right now I'm here to tell you about my mom. My mom was always very empowering. Now, I believe that we choose our parents because there are certain life experiences that we want to go through on our soul journey. You know, we go from one lifetime to the next, always learning something to contribute to who we are are in truth. So when I was a little kid, I I kind of thought it was strange. Our house had four bedrooms, two downstairs, two upstairs. So I was a little kid and my bedroom was downstairs. My parents' bedroom and my brother's bedroom, they were both upstairs, which means I pretty much had the run of things because I got up a whole lot earlier than they did in the day. In fact, I remember one morning I was pretty sure I was about four and nobody else was up and I was hungry and I went to go out and play. So I went in, took a match with the stove because our pilot light was out and I made myself my yummy sunny side up egg with the runny yolk and I think it was Wonder Bread that I was eating at the time to sop everything up. You see, I was always very independent. And I got to be independent because nobody told me that I couldn't be independent. So I ate and I was out the door to play. (laughs) And some hours later, a neighbor found me because they had no idea where I was. But what did all that independence mean for me? Well, I got to come home from kindergarten, right? Five years old to an empty house, had my own key, let myself into the house, make my own lunch, lunch for me. And I had to climb up because I was a little kid, climb up on the counters. I was always really athletic and reach up in all the cabinets to get all the ingredients for my chocolate milkshake. So I was in the store yesterday, as a matter of fact, and there was a Bosco chocolate syrup. So into my milkshake, or maybe it was a malted. Anyway, the Bosco chocolate syrup went in, a raw egg went in, the chocolate ice cream went in. 
I didn't know that anybody ate anything other than chocolate ice cream then. So, you know, I have a pretty strong notion that none of my friends' parents had any clue that there was no adult in the house when they came over to play. So I was grateful that I never felt limited. In fact, my mom really empowered me. She believed, she believed that I knew everything and that I could do anything and that I could grow up to be anything. And as such, I used to do repairs around the house. I'd build furniture. I just took care of everything. And I never had any doubts about whether I could do it or not. And that's a very empowering way to grow. So, well, the only thing about that was I wasn't allowed to have problems. And she explained to me why I couldn't have problems because she couldn't deal with it. And I'm not going to say anything more about that. So I grew up figuring out things for myself. Now, here's the mom. Who, oh, and by the way, after my dad left and after he went to the next plane when I was eight, suddenly I got really fat because there's a thought that when people gain a lot of weight, it's because they're protecting themselves. Well, that sure happened to me because I was a normal size kid until he died. Anyway, my mom never said I was fat. She never said I was dumb or slow or any of those things. Everything was just all good. My mom worked all day long, Monday through Saturday. And on Sundays, we used to get in the car and go to our office because long distance calls were really expensive then. And we call all our relatives. We lived in New York. We call all our relatives who lived in D.C. and Virginia. And that's just what we did. But the other thing that we did when my mom was home, when she wasn't working, she was playing with me. We played games. We played Scrabble. In the beautiful warm weather outdoors, we played badminton and croquet. And she got a swimming pool. What a nice, <laughs> you know, one of those round above ground swimming pools. She got that for me. And she knew how much I loved the water and boats. And she got me a boat for that little pool so that I could go round and round in this little pool. She was pretty darn amazing, all the things she did. But she was amazing in every way. I remember one evening, my brother was hosting a dance party. My brother had people over for, we did a lot of dancing and singing and music in my family when I was growing up. So he had this party. And all of a sudden, he came upstairs to complain to my mom that some people had crashed the party. And when he told them to leave, they wouldn't leave. Some guys, right? So he told my mom about that problem. My mom was pretty small, probably 5'2". She went down in the basement where the party was. And she told them in no uncertain terms to leave right now. And they did. So my mom was so powerful and always there for her kids and for her mom too. Because whenever weather permitted, her mom stayed with us too. She'd go away in the winter time, but she'd be with us most of the time in the warm weather in the summertime. So some other things that my mom did was when my brother was going to medical school, she went and took out a second mortgage on the house. Now, this is a single mom in the 1950s and 60s when women didn't get paid very well for their work, which is why she worked so much and so hard and all the time. And she'd come home for dinner and she'd have to go back to work. And she'd usually take me with her because she didn't want to leave me home alone on the start camp, which I think was a pretty good idea. 
But she also, when her boss couldn't make payroll because there weren't enough sales going on, she took out a personal loan, a personal loan so that everybody could get paid. And then she'd have to make sure she got reimbursed because it was not forthcoming. So all these things, it was such a great example for me to follow. She, and I guess I got this from her because I was always attracted to guys and guys were always attracted to me. I was always somebody's girlfriend from the time I was eight years old. <laughs> Didn't say they were my boyfriends, but I was always somebody's girlfriend. And she worked for Kirby, that really fancy vacuum cleaner and she would let people drop their vacuums off at our house. So when my brother was home before he left for college, he'd do the repairs. And there was one gentleman who always had something wrong with his Kirby and he needed it fixed and he'd come by so often. And my mom told me he actually wanted to marry me. But she said no, because she was worried about me and worried about whether I'd be happy if somebody else came into the family because it would change all the dynamics. So because I was home alone much of the time, I spent hours and hours every day playing music. I had two recorders and I played about six different instruments. I'd record back and forth adding instruments. Gosh, I wish I still had those recordings. I don't. So I got to have all this fun and then I paint and I just got to develop all these arts because I had the freedom to do it. Now, because my mom allowed me to be independent like that, I get on my bike and I ride for miles and I'd ride through the woods, the aqueduct, which was the path that took the water from up in Croton Dam. There was a, a dam up north of us and it supplied the water for New York City. So there was this clear path. It was basically across the street from us in the woods of the aqueduct. And so I had a place to ride my bike and I just get on my bike and go. Never knew where I was going. I just went. When I was even younger, I'd go back in the woods all by myself. There was a fallen tree. And this was, remember, I was like five or six years old. It was when the Sputnik and the rocket ships and Flash Gordon were going on. So I'd go back in there and play on my rocket ship, which was a fallen tree. Because my mom always let me know I could do anything and I could be anything, and because she never ever put me down. She never said anything I did was wrong or bad. Even when I, I guess I was about nine, when I realized, well, I saw a picture of me. It's like, wow, I didn't know I was that big. So I started, I started by eating when I was nine. And yogurt was a new thing then. And whenever I asked my mom to get for me, and they didn't have superstores like they do now, but I remember they had Dan and yogurt. They had prune yogurt and they had coffee yogurt and she bought them for me so that I could do what I need to do to take care of myself. So I was actually able to drop the pounds. So yeah, I learned how to cook by the time I was 12, I was making dinner for her. So when she came home at dinner time, I'd have it for her. Now, as I said, she was always playing with me when she was home. And I think that's pretty amazing that she did stuff like that. And she also never asked me to help her out. She never asked me to help clean the house or to do the laundry. I could have done all that, but it didn't occur to me because I was focused on my music and my art and my studying, and it just didn't occur to me. So if you got kids, 
you know, let them be responsible from a young age. I did that with my kids because it's important to be part of the whole picture to not always be a full-time taker. So I just wanted to share some stories with you about what I got to do and who I got to be because of my mom having that attitude that I could be anything, that I could do anything. When, well, let's see, when I was nine, I learned how to shoot archery, just with a bow and arrow. So she bought me the bow, she bought me an arrow, including some hunting arrows and a target, because when I get to shoot at the house, I don't think so. <laughs> anyway, so I, I was home alone a whole lot. And one day I thought I heard the front door open. I didn't figure out I should lock the door after I came in. Thank goodness I lived in a safe neighborhood. So I thought I heard the door open. I thought I heard somebody run upstairs. So I'm nine years old. You know what I did? What do you think I did? I grabbed my bow and my arrows and I went right upstairs with my bow and arrow ready to go in case I saw someone. There was nobody up there, thankfully, because I don't know if I could have shot somebody. Anyway, that's one of the things that allowed me to know that I'm independent and I could take care of myself. And I had to take care of myself and I had to get myself places. If I had to go any place that was very many miles away, I called a cab. Sometimes I went to Hebrew school by cab. That was a half hour away. Just all these things, how many little kids are thinking or knowing, or just it's the normal way to be. So I'm very grateful that I got to grow up that way. And I'm thinking about I've told you before other things that my mom has done, running all the businesses, taking care of my brother, taking care of me. And I'm not gonna go into any fine details about that. I do wanna share how I know when my mom comes to visit me. So I'll see my paintings rearranged, the paintings hanging on my wall. Uh, my home is full of paintings because I've been painting all my life. And, and sometimes they're photographs. And she comes to visit me and she lets me know that she came to visit me. Sometimes I see her light, which I was with her just after she left her body. So I saw her golden light. So sometimes I see her light, not very often, but I sure do see when a painting's been rearranged. One night in the middle of the night, I heard crash. And I went out in the great room of the house. And one of the wall hangings I had from my friend Keith Couch had given me one of his photographs. He's quite a talented photographer. It had fallen off the wall and the frame broke. I don't think that could have happened all by itself. So I figured that's my mom wanting to get my attention. Now, another thing that my mom did to get my attention, I was with a friend and we were studying one of the energy modalities, actually the one that I focused on, well, plus how I edited it and added things to it. But my main modality before creating my own. So we were practicing, and she was working on me. And suddenly there was this fragrance of flowers that filled the room. We were in a motel. And I said, My mom's here, isn't she? And my friend said, Yes, she's right over there. My friend was a medium and she could see things that I couldn't see. Okay. Another time I was with my friend. She was working on me again. And 
the way we were working, you put a hand all over somebody's head. I think it's to keep them away because people try to escape. They want to escape when you're working with them. So they kept falling asleep and I would keep having to bring them back because they didn't want to know the stuff that was coming up, their histories, right? So my friend's hand is up here and all of a sudden I feel it getting pushed away. And then a different hand comes up there. And I reached up there because I knew whose hand that was. And my friend said, yeah, that's your mom. And she pushed my hand away and put her hand there. I held my mom's hand for the last three months of her life, almost nonstop. I knew what her hand felt like. So she doesn't come to visit me as often, but man, she was here this morning and I've been observing and loving her all day. I, I love her anyway, but it was just a really special day. And it was really special to have all these memories. And when I hear all these people complaining about how horrible their childhood was and what their parents said to them and how hurt they were. And I never had any of that. I was never told I was fat or slow or stupid or unlovable, never any of that. So none of that fits for me. And I'd love for that to be your reality too. Obviously, I don't know who you chose to be your family in your current lifetime. But if you look for the good in the situation, and if you realize nothing happens to you, and everything happens for you. And when I worked in crisis care as a psychotherapist, there were some horrendous stories. Rituals that were performed on these people when they were kids in some kind of really strange religions. And to say, how can you say I wanted that? But the thing is, you get to make a choice of if you're going to stay stuck for the whole rest of your life hurting, or you're going to change your world, move on with your life, become empowered, and understand why you chose that, and how you can grow because of it. And that's how life flows. I thank you so much for joining me here today, and I wish you a day filled with love and go back and look for the happy loving things from your family of origin because even if you don't think they're there if you look for it, you'll see them remember to join our facebook group and to head on over to our show site where you can watch or listen to any episode, check the show notes and enjoy. That's capital I N, capital J O Y, your life in every moment. Every moment, because nothing happens outside of you. Nothing happens outside of you, everything happens within. Your whole world is happening within. I will see you here next time. <laughs>